Welcome everybody to a video here on Color TV where we are going to talk about the new patch. The Kel'Thas patch was introduced by Blizzard and so far we haven't really seen too much play just yet. There are of course the first two tournaments that will start very soon with the new patch so that we're seeing how the competitive scene is going to adjust what happened here. But the patch in general was really really interesting and we're going to talk about that today. In this video we are going to talk about the most important things that the patch brought and also touch on a few of the heroes that got changed. But of course the first thing is always the new hero. We have with Kel'Thas a new assassin in the game, a new damage dealer. And Blizzard introduced another one after they already introduced one in the last patch which was of course Sylvanas. Not really labeled as an assassin, more as a specialist but still one of the damage dealers that we have currently in the game. So the meta is already going to be shaken up by that alone. That we have a new assassin suddenly that you can ban out so the picks and bans are going to be highly influenced by that since you suddenly have more options. But Kel'Thas as a new hero is also pretty interesting to play. He has of course his three abilities, they were already introduced, we have Flame Strike, we have a nice stun for him as well and the Living Bombs that give you an ability that can first of all go for a bit of wave clear but also be really annoying against heroes themselves. And his passive is an interesting one. Venom Spheres is something that you can activate every 6 seconds and it will empower your next ability. In the case of Flame Strike, for example, that means that your radius for the Flame Strike itself is a lot bigger than before or with a normal Flame Strike. So the way that the hero works is quite interesting. You want to use your passive as often as you can. You always have to make the choice which of those talents do you really want to empower with your next uh, trait, with your next passive ability. At the same time though, of course, the heroic abilities are very important. Phoenix seems pretty cool right now, but what everybody is talking about is of course the Pyroblast. If you see that thing rolling your way, you know that you're in trouble. And it is actually very common that it takes more than even half the hit points of a hero though. So you can use it as an opener in a team fight, you can use it as a finisher. People are currently experimenting with it, but it looks like especially the build around the flame strike is one of the things that we will have to watch out for since it's extremely nice to poke at opponents once that you get the extra range on the talent as well so you can do a lot of damage with that you can try and zone them out and another ability that is highly interesting is the stun that we are seeing on Kalthas. So that might be something where people are going to experiment with a few utility builds and trying to just play him in a way that he can assist the rest of the team and then with his own heroic try to get some extra damage in and of course the flame strike. Bottom line, Kalthas, a very interesting hero. We have to wait to see how exactly he's going to work out in competitive play. But the fact alone that he exists is going to shake up the meta quite a bit since suddenly you have with your picks and bans a new assassin to consider and a new damage dealer. There's a lot of combo potential, especially with something like Flame Strike. He has a lot of area of effect damage spells in general and that is amazing when you combine that with a more into Apocalypse, for example, with Jaina's Blizzard, something along those lines. So there's a lot of potential play that you can have in a competitive environment but we will have to wait how the teams adjust it. The hero is fun to play, has no real escape so that's a bit of one of the downsides. You have of course your stun but that is only one of the things that could potentially get you to safety in a bad situation. He's very very squishy so you need to be careful when playing him but he's definitely fun and he's a great addition to the game. Besides the introduction of a new hero another thing that Blizzard also did is they really worked on the warriors a lot. And especially on warriors like ETC, Diablo, Muradin and also in Uberak. So all of a sudden when we're looking at ETC, it's not only that tanky monster anymore that just like tries to jump into the opponent's backline and then just wreaks havoc there. ETC changed the role completely. A lot of talents got removed, a lot of other talents got moved to a different level and he uh, got a few new ones. Right now it looks like ETC is actually going to be uh, some kind of utility tank. He has a great amount of heal and yes I'm not kidding like I actually played with ETC a lot today and out healed several Uthers in various games. On level 13 you're getting a talent that allows you to use your E, your heal, also in a, a close area around you to heal allies and that is extremely powerful especially since now on level 1 you have a talent that allows you with every health globe that you pick up to get a bit of additional heal on E and with that it's suddenly insane how much heal you get out in those team fights that you usually have at the end of the game. So it's not really uncommon to ones that you had 13 get an amazing amount of heals out if you're always in this, uh, in this uh, thick of things and are trying to just like 
use your power slides, use your face melts and everything. And during all of that, just go for the heal as well. So as funny as it may sound, but ETC has a lot of heals. So we could actually suddenly see double tank compositions. One with the main tank, ETC more in a supporter role as a tank, but still supplying, of course, a lot of crowd control skills. He still has his abilities where he can just jump everywhere on the map. The heroics didn't get touched. He has his mosh pit. He has also his stage dive. And on level 20, he now has this ghost mosh pit, which is kind of interesting. Once you die, you immediately release a mosh pit. So heroes around you that killed you will be in a mosh pit, which can be quite interesting, but I think only if the opponent really focuses you down first, which is a bit unlikely, but it would be another one of those talents that makes it very, well, it makes it a bit risky for an opponent to focus you first, so they would probably look at another target to begin with. EDC is not as tanky as he was before, so oftentimes you will see him probably in a two-tank environment or with strong healers behind him in addition. But one of the things that we could see in the meta is ETC with Tyranda together without a dedicated healer. Since both of these heroes have a level 13, a nice talent where they can start healing allies, that might be one of the things that we are going to see. You could throw a Tacita in for the extra shield to keep the two of them alive and then just add additional damage. So there's a lot of potential that ETC and the changes that Blizzard applied here will shake up the meta as well. As mentioned before, Diablo also got changed. I didn't really get the chance to play Diablo myself yet, but I watched a couple of the streams, I talked to a few of the players, and everybody just says that Diablo feels a lot better now. They feel that he is a bit stronger, he lost a bit of his tankiness that he had before, but he's a lot more agile. The best thing, of course, is still his new mount. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. I, I personally still think that Blizzard should allow you to select the money pick when you are using Diablo's new mount and just simply set the pick right in front of him so that he chases it down. I personally would love that. That picture in my head like made me laugh so many times yesterday. But yeah, Diablo in itself, he feels a lot like more... Like he's not like that stale guy anymore that just like has this one trick pony, you know, that moves in, gets his stun, gets a slam, pushes targets away. Suddenly he feels just a bit more agile in the environment. He has a lot of crowd control that he can use here. So Diablo is still going to be a hero that you will see in the current meta. He's very interesting the way that he plays right now. It looks pretty cool and overall the changes for Diablo seem very interesting here. Of course, when asked to ask why exactly did Blizzard touch on a hero that was already part of the meta and really on the top of the crowd and didn't really like look at those tanks that are completely underused right now but the changes in Diablo are pretty cool so I would definitely recommend to you to give the hero another shot if you didn't really like him in the past he feels much better now Two more warriors have been touched by Blizzard, Anubarak and also Muradin. Muradin received just a few changes which make his Thunderclap build even better and that is especially good when you're going up against a hero like Illidan for example. They also worked a bit on his Haymaker but the Illidan counter is something that we're probably going to see quite a lot. In the last patch already when you saw the meta then oftentimes when your opponent picked Illidan you would go for Muradin to have that Thunderclap to make sure that he doesn't get like this amazing momentum in a team fight and now that ability of Muradin got even better so he is extremely strong against Illidan right now. Could be one of the counter picks that we are seeing in the new patch. Hero still feels pretty damn good and Muradin, a lot of fun to play. On the other hand, with the Nubarak, they buffed the Beetle AI and therefore the Beetles don't just like walk off in the middle of the fight. Suddenly they are starting to focus down the targets that you want to attack as well. And just in general, Blizzard worked also on his abilities and said, okay, we want to make the hero a bit smoother. We want to make sure that everything that you use just reacts a lot faster than it did before so that you don't really have all those delays to take into account. And that is working so far pretty well. Nubarak, the hero, received a few changes. He seems to be really nice right now. Feels pretty good to play him, a bit more natural. Of course, he was already played in the last patch, but that was mostly because of his blood for blood ability. A few teams really like to use the web blast here as well, but we could definitely see Nubarak a lot more often in competitive play in the current patch. There was of course a whole big list of changes that Blizzard made and a lot of those don't really seem to be too significant. Like the changes overall seem to be very nice. I actually like the patch. It's pretty cool so far. But there are a couple of heroes that I touched that might have a bigger influence on the meta. And the three of them that I want to talk about is Abatha, Nova and also Reyna. A lot of people were hoping that Reyna with the new changes would maybe be played a bit more often but right now it actually looks like the patch hurt him since there is also an increased knockback right now on his Q, on his penetrating shot. And the big build that we saw for Reyna in the last patch was actually a build that focused a lot on his Q ability. And now with an additional knockback that actually puts you in a position where you don't really want to use that all that much. So it feels a bit like Reyna didn't really benefit from this patch as a few people thought when they saw the changes but that he won't be played all that much. Personally, I would hope that a different build pops up and we suddenly see him back in the meta, but so far it doesn't really look like it. 
On the other hand, we could see Nova back to business. And the reason is quite simple. There's a new talent or well, a change to a talent on level seven where we now have follow through. And that's a talent that you should know from other heroes like Sylvanas, like for example, also on Thrall. What basically happens is that once you use an ability, your next auto attack is going to do a lot more damage, 80% in that case. And that could be a very interesting talent for Nova. Of course, on level seven, usually you would go for the anti-armor shells, which gives you 250% extra damage. But at the same time, you only attack at a third of the speed that you would usually do. So it kind of combines three shots into one and just reduces the damage done by three shots just by a tiny little bit. So in this case, suddenly you have an option on level seven. You can go for follow through and for Nova players that really want to stay in the fight and not just always like jump in, poke and move back. You suddenly have an option where you can lead with a snipe, go for right click, go for uh, the next ability and just use one after another and get your shots. And then if you really keep in those battles and move along the way, then you can do a lot of damage with that. Teams are already experimenting with it. So far, it's really too early to tell if we will really see Nova back in the meta, but there is definitely an option for her to be back, especially, of course, because now with so many area of effect spells that you have and with the whole meta also shifting to uh, crowd control, we could see penetrate, sorry, um, we could actually see the precision strike a lot more often. Just imagine what happens when you, for example, have Diablo and Zagara, you have more into Apocalypse, and then on the top of things, there comes a precision strike down right there and dishes out all the damage. It's a pretty cool thing to have, but a lot of the times, teams didn't really go for it because Nova didn't add too much besides that, unless they were running also with the Zara tool and were trying to go for an early roaming squad there. So now suddenly you might have more options with Nova if we might see her a lot more often in the patch, which I personally hope for, but time will tell. Another change was of course demanded by the community after Abathai in the last patch was once again a bit of a nuisance. The slug just tunneled behind the keep and would drop his triple locust on level 16. And of course what you had to do with that is you would have to go for the global nests on level four, then get the range on level 13 uh, for your for your like little beetles. And uh, then after that you would just like go for the triple locust once that you hit level 16 and the fun would begin. I confess I have abused that quite a bit as well. It's pretty fun to play, but it's not really all that much fun to play against it. You kind of have to keep one hero in your base the entire time. So Blizzard, of course, realized that that was just a bit too harsh. What they did, they simply reduced the range of the level 13 uh, range locust talent, and therefore you can't really go for that strategy anymore. Something that, of course, a lot of players are going to completely welcome. A good change, it was a necessary change, and I feel that was a very good decision that they made here. Abathur can still be played. He's still in a position where you can play him to support Illidan, for example. The build that prevailed in competitive play is still useful. It didn't get changed at all. So Abathur is probably still going to be part of the meta, even though we're not going to see him all that often. There's two more things now, a quick overview that I want to mention. The first is that Blizzard introduced a feature that a lot of people have been asking for for a long, long time right now. If you go under options and gameplay, you suddenly have a checkbox that you can activate if you are really tired of all those accidental right clicks on the minimap where you suddenly just walked straight into the opponent instead away from them. So finally, you can turn that off if you're one of the people that really got affected by this. You can just head into the options, into gameplay, and you will see the checkbox right away so you can deactivate the minimap here. Another thing is also that you might actually miss is if you haven't completed the tutorials yet, then definitely do that because right now we had a few extra rewards from Blizzard. In total, there are four tutorials that you can play and if you complete them, you get, I think it's a thousand gold that you get. So that's quite a lot of money. If you guys are in need of some gold, if you wanna buy a new hero, if you wanna buy a new master skin, that might be exactly what you're looking for. So just check out the bottom right in your Heroes of the Storm menu, click on that and then if you go to tutorial, you will immediately see that you can activate the those tutorials that you can complete then if you haven't completed them in the past if you did don't worry the gold isn't lost you will actually get that gold immediately once upon updating and accessing battlenet again so that's pretty cool it's a nice change in general the patch feels good i really like it i'm of course excited for the next one already since the game is going to be launched on the 2nd of june this was just a short overview guys let me know if you would see stuff like this a bit more often in the future we were only touching on the main points here in the patch but if you have any questions feel free to just drop a comment in the comment section and ask there i'm sure that also the rest of the viewers is going to help you with that and if i get an opportunity to answer one of those questions i will do that too so guys once again thank you very much if you want to see more stuff like that give the video a thumbs up on youtube subscribe to color tv and i'm going to see you next time for more heroes of the storm here on the channel